Welcome to AI 101 for Communicators, the definitive course for writers, marketers, and content creators who want to stay ahead in the fast evolving world of artificial intelligence. Whether it's creating compelling narratives or personalizing media content, AI is not just the future, it's here, transforming the way we communicate and tell stories. If you're innovative, creative, and forward-thinking, this course will equip you with the knowledge and tools to harness AI, embracing your creativity, not replacing it. I'm Bradley Taylor, CEO of Answer AI and co-founder of Last Rev. And over the years, my teams and I have had the privilege of empowering some of the world's most popular brands by integrating advanced AI into their marketing strategies. Generative AI has been a game changer in how we conceive and execute our content strategies, having personally integrated its evolution into my daily workflows for over two years. The power of AI isn't just in automating tasks. It's about enhancing human creativity, making our narratives more engaging, our strategies more personalized, and our outcomes more impactful. And by the end of this course, you'll have a fundamental understanding of AI, its key terms, its concepts, so that you'll be able to make informed decisions about the tools that you choose in your content strategy. We'll also dispel some of the AI myths and talk about some of the realities of what AI is, and most importantly, what it isn't. And you'll become a master of prompt writing while learning to use the most popular tools like ChatGPT, Claude's Anthropic, and Meta AI. And I'll share with you 10 best practices for prompt writing, as well as go over some strategies and tips that I've collected over the last few years. We'll also go over some of the ethical considerations when using generative AI in your marketing strategy, as well as some of the considerations for bias mitigation. And at the end of this course, you'll feel prepared to take on AI and start incorporating it into your daily workflow. So how did we get here? These are all of the AI applications as of April 2024. That's a lot to take in. And even when we zoom in around text, audio and voice, and image, you can see there's already a ton of choices uh, in AI applications uh, that all have different ways of using them, and they all have their pluses and minuses. As you also have the foundational models like ChatGPT and OpenAI, you now have uh, models you may have heard of called Claude that recently had a Super Bowl commercial. And Facebook has led the charge in open source, and there are new open source models coming out every single day. But the skills that you're going to learn in this course will be transferable across all these applications. We're going to give you the basics that you'll need so that you can just evaluate what tools is best for you. Well, one of the things about AI is that unlike any other tool we've ever invented, uh, you can actually ask AI what it is. You can ask it how to use any other tool as well. Uh, so I asked in this case, ChatGPT using ChatGPT 4.0. And this is what it says. At its core, AI is about creating intelligent machines that can learn, reason, adapt, and potentially work more efficiently than humans on specific tasks. It's the art and science of making machines smart, enabling them to recognize patterns, understand languages, and even create art based on sets of rules known as algorithms. Thanks, ChatGPT. So how did we get to a place where we can literally ask a machine uh, what it is and it can give a coherent answer? The idea of creating machines uh, that could do things for us is nothing new. There's actually a Greek god that uh, was depicted in various myths as the creator of robot-like servants capable of acting on their own accord. Uh, fun fact, a Roman version uh, was, uh, God's name was Vulcan, for all you Star Trek fans out there. 1936, uh, when modern AI really started to take off, uh, and Scientists by the name of Alan Turing opposed uh, the universal machine and actually used it to break the Nazi Enigma machine uh, to help us win World War II. And in 1950, Alan Turing published the Computing Machinery and Intelligence, which really introduced a test that you may have heard of today called the Turing test. And the Turing test pretty much proposed a test that said, when a machine 
uh, or when a human is communicating with a machine, if the human cannot tell the difference between whether or not they're communicating with the machine or the human, we can consider that machine intelligent. Well, some people may say that ChatGPT may have already passed that test. But in 1956, another scientist by the name of John McCarthy uh, coined the term artificial intelligence and had a conference at the Dartmouth conference uh, really marking the birth of AI of, as a scientific field of study. And that led to a lot of hype and a lot of funding that went into a lot of the projects that really failed. And that led in 1960s into the 1970s, uh, what's considered the AI winner. Uh, when people realized that making these machines do what people wanted it to do was actually a lot harder than it seems. But in the 80s, a new technique called deep learning, and that really showed promise, creating expert systems that was good at doing one thing, but doing it really well. And in 1997, IBM showed with Deep Blue that it could beat current chess pro Gary Kasparov at chess. And this is something that nobody thought could ever happen. He even said that chess was done as a sport. Actually, turns out it's more popular than ever. And in 2002, iRobot launched the Roomba, making the cat the beneficiary of the very first autonomous vehicles. And then in 2006, uh, Stanford's Stanley wins the DARPA Grand Challenge, which was a competition that was aimed to see if uh, a group could create a vehicle that could drive autonomously through the desert. And then in 2011, IBM's Watson shocked the world again when it didn't just beat the two current Jeopardy champions, but crushed them. And this, once again, was a feat by AI that no one thought was possible. Then in 2014, just three years later, AlphaGo, which was developed by Google, became the first computer program to win at Go, uh, which, unlike chess, has more options for moves than there are atoms in the galaxy. And this is where AI really started to take shape because the way that it won is that it actually created a move that was once unthought of by the professionals at the time showing that ai could still be creative and then in 2017 google released a paper called attention is all you need and this paper set the foundation for generative ai which is the foundation of what chat gpt and also audio and video, all of these are based off of where you put text into a prompt and then you get text or images or video out of the other end. And that has led to amazing things. We now have AIs that are capable of searching the internet and doing research for us. We have AIs that can create art. We have AIs that can solve complex problems. We have AIs that can help us brainstorm and help answer questions and help us prioritize our tasks in a more efficient way. The journey of AI, especially in communications, is as fascinating as the technology itself. From its early concepts to today's advanced AI models, these tools are reshaping industries. Understanding its history helps us appreciate its potential, and more importantly, navigate its future. In our next video, we'll debunk some of the common myths you may have heard about AI and uncover the facts. We'll also discuss the importance of mastering these tools to stay ahead, empowering you to make informed decisions in your workflow. It's an exciting time to be a creator, and I'm thrilled to show you how to unleash your inner creativity simply by asking the right questions.